injuries, people getting badly hurt after crashing on scooters. And tonight, for the first time, we have a better idea how often it happens. In less than a year, scooters have been on the streets. Baylor Scott and White reports they've treated 156 patients and 10 of them had to be sent to the ICU and one man died. Matt Howerton is live in Dallas tonight. Matt, all those injuries are adding up to one big medical bill. Yeah, Chris and Izzy, the cost is huge. Baylor Scott and White basically put it to me this way just moments ago. Scooter crashes, specifically ones involving uninsured riders, have dealt an unanticipated financial blow to its trauma center downtown. When they fly by, you ever think, man, how many people crash on those things? Well, it's funny, no one in Dallas really knew until Baylor Scott and White. It was all staff just talking to each other going, wow, we're seeing a lot of those. Started seeing injury after injury, all thanks to e-scooters. It's kind of a new technology, new problem. We didn't know what we were going to be looking at. Meet Karen Miner. She's just been in charge of tracking scooter injuries and spent weeks collecting data back to June. This is bigger and more significant than we thought it initially it was going to be. Let me show you. Since June of last year, 156 total patients with scooter related injuries have visited Baylor Scott and White. 30 have been admitted, 10 have been taken to the ICU, and one has died. But Miner dug even deeper. From June to January, she found that 57% of injuries occurred between 7 p.m. and 6 a.m. No riders wore helmets, that 33% of riders used alcohol, that 58% suffered extremity injuries, 43% had facial injuries, and 35% had brain injuries. Then there's this. Miner says patients with scooter injuries generated $491,000 in uninsured trauma costs. That's money the hospital may not get back. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. Dallas council members may tweak rules surrounding scooters and rental bikes later this year, and one tweak may include limiting scooter use at night. There isn't a day that I don't think about them. Jacoby Stone King died last year riding a scooter home from work after 2 a.m. It's not clear if he crashed on his own or was hit by a car. His brother just wants riders to be protected. I think it's important that the company gives us a product that doesn't have to be unpredictable. In Dallas, I'm Matt Howerton. Well, we're outside on the patio.